All right, let's look at part two of DBCC log info. And then below, I have a link to uh, Kaylin Delaney's post because DBCC log info is an undocumented uh, command. And so Kaylin provides a, a really excellent post, kind of an overview of some of these things, which we're going to be looking at briefly. We're not going to look at every one of them, um, but just a few of these uh, pieces. And if you ever get a chance to hear her speak, I've heard her speak about, I think, three times, actually. And uh, she's definitely worth it. And in fact, uh, I got into a, a bind one time with a client on SQL Server 2014, where a couple of senior uh, developers basically cautioned against 2014. And uh, I read her 2014 internals book, and it was just outstanding and answered all the questions I needed. In fact, I'll link it in the description as well. I highly recommend that book, especially if you're ever in a situation in which uh, you, you have clients that are interested in 2014 and there's misinformation. So she's very good at clarifying. So the pieces of DBCC log info in this part that we're going to look at, first of all, is the, the file ID. I rarely agree with architecture that uses multiple log files because it misunderstands uh, how the log works. The log is sequential, okay? But it's good to know if people are doing it. Um, I also look at the file size. The file size is measured in bytes. I look at the F sequence number. And remember that the transaction log, of course, is sequential. So for an example, think of it this way. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, where three is the max, right? So it goes back around. And why is that important? Well, think about if you're shrinking the file doing truncate only. And I'll show you an example of this in a second. And you're doing the truncate only where one and two are empty, but three is full versus what happens when you do the truncate only when, let's say, two is full, one is empty, and three is empty, right? It just if you understand how the sequentiality of the log works, it, it makes some sense in terms of troubleshooting. And then I like the create LSN for two reasons. First of all, it tells me how the log was created in the first place. And it also gives me a past of the BLF growth. Now, I put the um, past in italics because it is true that people can, you know, uh, shrink back the transaction log and reduce the VLFs. That is, that is true. Um, but depending on how old the database is or depending on what I see, I, I, that may not be the case. So let's look at this. First of all, let's look at uh, let's look at this specifically. We're going to start with uh, file ID. I want to try to keep this video short, but on the flip side, it's going to be quite a bit here. So you'll notice that there's one log file. And we can actually confirm this, for instance, if we run this query, and we can see that there's only one log file, right? Or you could right click on the database, go to database properties, click files, and you can see that here as well. So you can see that there's one log file. But with DBCC log info, um, that is on this column. So that's good. And again, for me, that's how I, I prefer to look at it. Okay, so the file size is measure, measured in bytes. And we'll look at these and we'll say, wow, these are you know a lot smaller than these. Well, let's go over to the create LSN number really fast. These are created um, with the database, right? So zero means they're created with the database, whereas these were created with some growth, okay? Now, what's really cool is that if the create LSN number is the same, then that means it was created in that batch of growth. Why is that important? Well, let's suppose I pull up a database, and guys, I've seen databases with 3,000 plus VLFs. I'm not kidding. I can look at, <laughs> we've all seen those logs where, you know, they're growing one meg at a time. I mean, it's, it's and you'll see that in the VLF history, and it's like, whoa. And so I like to grow mine in chunks if I have to grow it, right? And that's that's a big thing. I would much prefer to pre-grow my log. In this case, I didn't, um, but I would much prefer to pre-grow my log. And then um, going back to, what is it, the file sequence number, you can see that the highest value is where it is currently the VLF that it's currently at. So let's go back to the slide really fast here. So remember how I said... Um, that the transaction log is sequential. So for an example, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Well, let's look at this for really fast. If, let's say, that because this the, the transaction log is sequential, what do you think is going to occur if you try to do a truncate only um, where all of the free space in the log is previous and nothing is beyond... Um, that place versus what do you think is going to happen if you do it earlier, right? That's the difference with uh, sequential, kind of in a sequential architecture, if you would, and maybe a random architecture. Okay, so keep that in mind because there are there are situations in which, I'm trying to think of how to say it, it's like DBAs will try to shrink a log and they're like, it's not shrinking. 
And it's like, okay, we'll look at DBCC log info and see what's what's going on. And you may realize, oh, the reason is because where I'm at is at the very end, right? And so that's something to consider. So it's counterintuitive, but it's like the way that you're going to get it past that point is to, and I, I realize how counterintuitive this sounds, is you're going to actually engage in some transactions to move it, to wrap it back around. You can't see my cursor, but it's like you're you're doing transactions to push it further to go back around, right? And that's the, think of it as kind of like a loop, right? And so, and I realize it's like, wait, how do I do that? In fact, I think one of the, the worst, not the worst, but one of the worst experiences I had with a transaction log uh, was, It was set to full recovery. Man, I can't even remember. No, it was set to simple recovery, and it shouldn't have been. And it ran out of space. It, it's been a while, it feels like. But anyway, what I had to do was basically set it to full recovery, uh, do a transaction log backup, empty it out. Then after doing the transaction log backup, we finally had enough room um, to add space to the drive because even the systems person couldn't add space to the drive. It was a mess. Uh, it was a mess, and it was a very important database. But it was a good example of where the individual who set it up didn't understand how the log worked. And so um, when you don't set up something correctly, uh, it can definitely make a mess. So those are just some of the, the basic things that I look at. And again, you may be in an environment where there's a good reason to use multiple log files, but it is sequential to keep that in mind. And I would highly recommend reading the below post uh, by Kaylin Delaney. And then her book on SQL Server 2014 is is out of this world awesome. Uh, definitely recommend that. But these uh, these definitely will cover the part two of this series.